All right, y'all. Um, I am back again with another video. Um, I'm headed to the JLB because uh, y'all know what I gotta do. I gotta get this money, Mike. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, uh, <laughs> I ain't getting any money from YouTube yet. But that's the end goal. Eventually, I want to get monetized and, uh, you know, <clears throat> hopefully I get good enough or get enough eyes of viewership that, um, you know, I can quit working and I can do this kind of stuff full time and um, do some other things, too. Um, I have a lot of ideas of stuff that I want to do in the future, but, you know, um, working class guy, you got to take care of yourself first before you can other kind of things and stuff so you know at some point I, I would like to have uh you know giveaways and other stuff on the channel but anyway <clears throat> enough about that um it's not why i'm doing this uh right now so uh the lake we play the lakers tonight back to back it's a back to back for both games so i don't know again like how rested the starters for the lakers are going to be so i'm just going to assume fatigue is probably going to be on everybody, so this might be a slop fest. <clears throat> this could very well be a slop fest, and it's just part of the nature of the game. You got to accept it. Um, but anywho, look, I've seen a variety of comments um, ranging from the, dis the disgust of Lonzo's um, play and other things. And, um, I even said it last year. I was like, I'm not going to cut any slack with so. <clears throat> and I think I've been pretty fair as far as criticism for him is concerned. I will say this. Um, year five, and I know he's he was injury riddled his first two seasons. Um, but at this point, you got to be better about having your game ready. Get, uh, day day one versus you know taking that warm up time. Now he's still shooting forty percent from three, so obviously there is an improvement there that he started off that way. Um, also shooting eighty three percent from the free throw, which is you know career high for him. So that's nice to see. Although he's not getting the attempts per game, which is what you want from your starting point guard. You know if I'm going to be critical of him, it's the ability to get to the line. Now, I question how much of that is actually in his hands because, yes, he could attack the rim more, but he's not getting the calls anyway. So, in a sense, it's like, okay, we can ask for him to attack more, and he can do it, but if he's not getting the calls, he's not going to get to the line anyway unless it's something egregious. So he's got to become better or figure out a way to earn the respect of the whistle. Whether that means he needs to shift the attacking a whole lot more or something else. But <clears throat> that's a very fair criticism. And I kind of touched on that last night. Um, I don't feel the need to, like, you know, beat that dead horse. But, yeah, definitely needs to get to the free throw line uh, a lot more, especially since we have the best uh, free throw team in the league as far as uh, percentages going, 85% as a team. So, you know, pat yourself on the back, Bulls, Okay. But, uh, look, I, I really want to talk about this game, okay? Um, this is AD and Russell Westbrook. And I know, you know, the Lakers, I think, are 8-6 and six now. They're starting to um, come back in resurgence. They're starting to play a whole lot better, which is fantastic. Um, however, it's not, you know, as much shit as I talk about Russell Westbrook. We do not need to sleep on Russell Westbrook. The guy could go out there and get a triple double. And you never know the night you play him could be the night where he's knocking down shots. And because you sit there and say, oh, he's turnover prone, yada, yada, yada. I get it. You don't want to sleep on, you know, your competition. So I would employ Chicago Bulls to treat this like a playoff game. Set the tone. And Lonzo set the tone last game. 
went out there and said, we're going to attack the paint. We're going to get into the paint. And what did the Bulls do? They attacked. They got into the paint. And it, it helped them the entirety of the game. And they should continue to follow that, that method or that methodology or that thinking or that play style because it's going to help them even though they got Dwight Howard and Anthony Davis back there waiting. You should still get into them. Who knows, maybe you can draw some fouls on those guys, and I'm not just saying Lonzo, but I'm talking about DeRozan, Zach, and anybody else. Kobe or White will be back tonight. He should be a boost. Get in there and force those guys to have to defend you. And they play slow. Don't get into their game. Play fast. Make them move. Make them run. Get them old legs. Force them out there to have to jog and wear them down. It's okay to be behind a little bit in the first three quarters. What you're looking for is you're looking to set the trap for the late game, okay? Pace them, pace them into, into defeat. You know, play solid defense. Don't give up anything, you know. Stay in front of your man, talking to you, DeMar DeRozan. Stay in front of your guy, and I know it's going to be hard because of the athlete that Russ is, but still, you know, make him see bodies. Make him have to work for everything he gets. Same thing with AD. You're not going to have a physical body to just put on him because <laughs> you just don't have you don't have the bodies. But, hey, defend him by committee. You know, Lonzo and Caruso will be looking to see what they foul trouble is going to look like tonight if they get into foul trouble. You know, this this, this game this game could be very interesting. We, we, and I had them I had them set to lose this game with LeBron, and even with that, I still have them set to lose this game. Um, and this is even though I made that prediction, not knowing this was going to be a back to back, I'm still going to stick by my prediction. I still predict the Lakers to win this game. What? Yeah, we don't have Vooch, so it's kind of fair. But. There's, a, there's an experience gap, so we're going to have to see how that plays out. Now, um, all right, Lonzo's had two bad games. Okay, is he going to have a third straight bad game? Eh. He's taken about 13 to 14 shots the last couple games, so I like that. Um, what I don't like is this continued theme of, you know, get going in the first quarter and then they'll kind of coast the rest of the way and kind of let everybody else that's scoring do their thing. I think we should continue to be the bully. And if you got to coast, go ahead and coast a little bit in the second quarter, uh, particularly with DeRozan and, and Levine. You let, them, let them get shots. With the high quarters, first to the third, come with it. Get up your shots, attack, make them feel you. Make them uncomfortable. Force them to have to defend you. Force them to have to account for you. Don't just sit back, you know, and just get comfortable shooting threes. And uh, by the way, even if he's hot and he's like seven or ten, still attack the rim. Still attack the rim. <coughs> Something to keep or something to consider is what are they going to do about Caruso and Kobe White back? And I know they said that they were not going to play him a shit ton of minutes, understandably so, and I respect that for the most part because, you know, just coming off the injury, he's going to have a minutes restriction. And he hasn't played with these guys, but I'm interested to see how this works. Are you going to run your same rotations you did, keeping you know UCLA together, and instead you're going to put Kobe White back there with uh, Caruso and, and DeRozan? Is that the, is that what we're doing with this? Um, you know, is is that how they're going to play this? I don't know. You know, I'm interested to see how they use Kobe White. Um, I'm interested to see. If he's hesitant when he's attacking. Now, Kobe White, even though he's not going to play a lot of minutes, and even though he hasn't played in, like, months, there is an advantage because at the end of the day, he's fresh. He's the only player 
that will play tonight that did not do or did not have, you know, a game. So even though he's going to be on a minutes restriction, he's going to be an energy guy off the bench tonight. And he can help pick up the pace of this game very quickly when he's inserted into the lineup. And so obviously there's going to be some time and issues probably. But actually, if I'm being for real, I want to see him play next to Zoe. I want him, I really want to see him with uh, Zach Levine and so because if you if you give Zo the ball and he cuts, I'm pretty sure that Zo is going to find him. And he's going to relish or he's going to take full advantage of the fact that that man's got energy. Give him the cut, let him go in, draw a foul, get to the free throw line. And I feel this way because if you guys go back in, Remember the game where Pat Will first played. Zoe was looking for him. And every time Pat Will was in, Zoe was looking for him. Zoe was looking to get him going. It's like, here you go, big fella. Go ahead and, 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 and attack. Do you. Kobe White has a different mentality than Pat Will. He's going to get in there. He's like, look, I'm hooping. Now, I'm not sure if he'll feel the same as Pat Will did when he was just trying to like, let me fit in. Because uh, that's how Zion also did when he made his debut with the Pelicans. It's like, look, I'm just trying to fit in. I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes. I wonder if Kobe White is going to hesitate at first and they're going to have to tell him, like, bro, go ahead and do your thing. But I do expect if he shares the court at all with Lonzo tonight, that Lonzo is going to look to get him going. And that's something else I'm going to talk about here in a second. But Lonzo has a history of looking out for the guys on his team offensively, which – Let's go ahead and talk about that now. So I was uh, looking at the post-game presser because it was shared, or at least the comments that Paul George made about Lonzo. And he was talking about some things that I don't think a lot of people understand, and I want to break that down to you right now. So <clears throat> he mentioned how he gets them into the offense, how he maintains the pace, you know, he mentions all the things he does well, rebound, defend, um, pass, you know. Everybody seems to understand that Lonzo is way more beneficial on the court than off. All the other players has his respect. And they even acknowledge the fact that, hey, his three ball wasn't that good. And Paul George said this. It's like you could kind of sag off of him at first, but he's like, now you can't really sag off of him because he can knock those shots down. And um, a couple days ago, somebody had shared on Twitter. I'm not sure about how accurate this is, but I think he's like 80% on pull-up threes this year. Now, obviously, it's not a lot of shots, but 80%, I can't remember. I think he was like 20-something percent last year. The change is like night and day. If you go look at his videos, they're on my channel, his workout videos this summer. He was working on that stuff. And so you can see it paying dividends, which is why when people talk about him finishing at the rim, he worked on some of that this summer. Now, I'm not sure if he worked more on that versus the shooting, because based off the videos, it looks like he worked more on his, like, off the triple stuff. I expect that stuff to all come around sometime during the season. Let him get into his rhythm, figure out this team, and then he can pick his, his uh, spots on the court. Stacey King said this much, too, about Lonzo last night. It's like, hey, you know, he's a pass first, pass second. But sometimes one of those other guys don't have it. They're going to need him to just, like, take over and start contributing to the scoring because that way it'll help them because they just need three guys. And it's like if two of those guys got it going and the, and the third one doesn't, they're going to need his, his shooting, his scoring, his ability to get into the paint, yada, yada, yada. And I think <clears throat> that this is important because this often gets overlooked. Now, I know I'm kind of like touching different spaces here, so let me, let me bring this back to focus. A lot of people are talking about, well, so don't have the ball, so he don't get to the point good, and so he's just as three as he be. A leader 
or decision maker does not always have to be in a room when business talk is going on. Yes, you would like it, but it isn't always the case. Likewise, if you're the point guard of the team, you can still make decisions off ball. You can sit there, set up the action, and give the commands. And they're giving commands. I don't know if you guys watch. Watch the hand motions, the hand gestures. They're telling plays. Watch and see what they run. You'll start to see some of those um, actions being ran over and over again on certain plays. Watch it. And so you'll see Lonzo will bring the ball up. He'll gesture to whoever he's giving the ball to, and that's the play that they're running, okay? Even if he's off ball and the action has nothing to do with him, some of the looks that they get just because of his presence on the court because, hey, he's running the offense. I think people need to stop this notion or this idealism. Like, And, and I've said this before, and I've also said this on DJ's channel um, sometime last year. You can't want things for other people. They got to want it for themselves. And you can't assume just because you see something one way that that's standard or protocol for everything else. If so is calling or making commands for the offense and it's leading to good shots for everybody else and he's off ball, guess what? He's still running the show. It, it, it should be respected that, okay, for instance, let's say CP3 is playing off ball and on a play and Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton are going to, like, he wants to run a play that gets them both good looks. Let's just say it's horns. He doesn't have to have the ball. He might want to put Devin Booker on the ball as the point guard for the play or the ball handler or the creator, and he's going to run horns. And you might have Mikael Bridges and say DeAndre Ayton, you know, on a two on the uh, two post or the elbow post. Or if they're playing high horns, they might be a little bit higher on the perimeter. And he doesn't have to say anything. Abiyane, horns. All right, cool. We're going into action. He don't need the ball, but he just dictated or commanded the offense. Now, you might see that, and let's just assume Devin Booker gets like a good shot of tip and makes it. You know, oh, Devin Booker, you know, he's now up to 27 points. But how many other times were offensive sets ran that was dictated by CP3 throughout the game? And that's something that people have to consider. You don't have to be on the ball to be a, you know, dictator or, or showrunner, Okay. Yes, we, we, that heliocentricism of having that one guy that just is on the ball, ball pounder, he makes all the decisions, your hookahs, your trades, you know, CP3 back in the day especially. Not every good or great point guard is going to be that, nor do they have to. Like, being a point guard is more than just pounding the ball. And I know there's some soul fans slash stands that feel like he needs to pound the ball, air out the ball. No, he don't. And that's one of the benefits of Zoe. The ball don't stick with him. And that's what everybody says. Hey, I enjoy playing with a guy like that because I know I'm going to touch the ball. He can set up a play and he can get it <clears throat> and he can be on the ball and he can pass it to someone else that the play ain't even involved because, you know, the weak side defense isn't paying attention and that could be an open shot. Can make he can make that call. Likewise, too, DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine could get on the ball and refuse to reject or agree to reject that play and run something else, and they could get a good shot. And nobody is going to have an issue with that. The thing is, you want the consistency of the looks, and you're going to hope that the talent of those guys will show up. So if you run a set that gets, you know, DeMar on a curl action and at least the two points, it doesn't really matter who called it. You got two points. I'm just saying. But I think because of what Paul George said, and he's not the only one, but if he's saying this stuff, obviously he understands that there's a different dynamic when Zoe's on the court. And I get it. People want to call him a connector, or three and D wing, and all this other stuff. You can call him whatever you want. Okay? He's still doing a job, and by the numbers, the team is better with him on the court than without him. And 
in the last three years, he's been a part of like two top five um, squads, like as far as terms of net rating. The one that had Zion, Drew, P.I., Favors, that one was top five. And now you got the Caruso lineup with Vooch and so and Levine and, and DeRozan. Like, he, he contributes to winning. And I expect him to contribute to winning again tonight. <clears throat> so again, man, and I've, I've mentioned this before. I'm not expecting a whole bunch of points for him. Now, I expect a little bit more because Vooch is out. But I don't expect 20, 18 points. No, I don't expect that. But I do expect him to contribute to winning on a high level, be like an all-defensive team player, uh, contribute on the boards, and keep this team offense humming. And when all else fails, I expect him to go to him to set the table on offense to get a good look. And what I mean by that is I'm not saying, okay, they give him the ball to tell him to make a play. I expect him to give him the ball, and he's going to give the command because he's the control tower. And everybody else says, okay, we're going to trust you, and we're going to get the easy open look. <clears throat> and when people say he makes the game easier, I think that's a conversation that needs to be had. Because, you know, as we're having this conversation, how many shots is the team getting because he made a play or made a play call and they went and ran it? How many? That's contributing. You know, that's making the game easier. And sometimes he's making little adjustments. Maybe he's telling somebody, somebody, hey, don't, don't move. I'll go set the pick. Maybe he's wanting to match up because, okay, all right, let's see. If, if, if I'm going to, if you're going to trap DeMar DeRozan, I need the ball because I can make a three. I can make a mid-range. Or I got the passing skills to get the ball where it needs to go and for us to take advantage of this situation. Or I have enough offensive gravity for three that if they get off me, I can knock down the shot, which will lead them to get off of DeRozan, which will open up his game even more. Sometimes it's just little stuff like that. Either way, I'm not angry with Zo. Yes, would I like to see him knock down those shots? Absolutely. I, I really would love to see him knock down those shots. But they're winning, man. Let's just get consistent good looks. Let's build that key, that teamwork. Let's build that chemistry. Let's build some sustainable winning. You know, like David Griffin say, <laughs> let's build some sustainability. Because uh, not the all the sustainability, but let's let the sustainability that we have, let's build that. We're 9 and 14, okay? One win away. We win tonight, we're 10. We got 10 wins on the season. Excellent. Excellent. So let's see what we are. Anyways, that's all I got. Um, hopefully I get home in time enough to watch most of the game. If not, I'll have to watch it tomorrow and give a synopsis then. But um, hopefully I can uh, catch most of the game tonight. But anyway, that's all I got. Hey, I hope y'all have a good day. And I'm looking forward to reading your comments and your feedback. Um, And if you got any questions, hell, leave them in the comment section. Uh, since I'm going to be doing a field trip today, I got nothing but time. So I'll sit there. I'll respond to your questions today. Some days I'm just busy. I might just leave a like or whatever. Let you know, hey, I saw your comment. Um, even though if I didn't have time to respond, I'm doing other stuff. But, you know, leave a comment, and I'll get back to you today, uh, especially if you got a question. So y'all have a good day. Peace.